Let's call back in my friend Steve Lonigan, Director of Monetary Policy for American Principles in Action. Steve, you have run for the U.S. Senate, as have I. We are no strangers to political money and political monetary policy, if you will. The Jeb Bush pre-announcement announcement earlier this week, what does that mean in terms of money? Do you think a lot of donors will go ahead and write checks to Jeb Bush just as, quote, insurance? I'm sure he has a major fundraising base, J.D. Let's face it, the whole Bush family mechanism is pretty powerful, but there are still donors who are going to sit back and wait to see more, where he stands on certain issues. He has the problem of his major support of Common Core, which is terribly unpopular, his support uh, of, of amnesty. Um, so he's going to have to deal with those issues. And he hasn't really come out clearly and said, I'm running. So um, I think there's going to be a big battle over And you have a number of people that potentially candidates for president, including Chris Christie in New Jersey, uh, who have the ability to raise a lot of money to well, compete for those dollars. Let's talk more about Governor Christie. Obviously, he was uh, lukewarm in his endorsement when, when you uh, uh, took on uh, the now senator uh, from New Jersey, uh, Brother Corey there. But I'm just kind of curious. Christie, another, quote, establishment darling. Does his geographical and philosophical proximity to Wall Street mean he is still able to raise big money despite some, some movement downward in the polls? Yeah, that's a good question. I think Jeb Bush has equal, if not better, entree into those markets. I don't know if the geographical position matters. How, however, I also don't know if the Republican Party in the country is ready for another Republican candidate from the Northeast, like Mitt Romney was from Massachusetts. And, and so Jeb Bush is going to dig very deeply into what would have been Chris Christie's most important base going into a primary, especially in the fundraising area. Well, we, we talk about the guys from the establishment. What about the grassroots conservatives? There, there's been real concern, Steve, just that It'll end up being Bush as the, quote, establishment favorite. And then any number of conservatives, whether Rand Paul as a conservative, the more libertarian bent, or, or Ted Cruz, or uh, someone else, and all that conservative support gets fractured, and here comes another establishment nominee. Yeah, you know, J.D., we always sit here months ahead of time, and it's going to depend, try to speculate about how the race is going to go, but it's going to depend on who's ultimately in the race. If Jeb Bush and Chris Christie are competing, they're going to split that sort of establishment base. I think that creates a problem for both of them. They may want to put their heads together and decide who's going to be the candidate. I don't think either one of them distract from, say, a Rand Paul or a Ted Cruz, uh, for that matter, and that, uh, that, but actually having them both in the race could help them. I think both Governor Christie in New Jersey and Jeb Bush have a problem with the conservative base because of their somewhat wishy-washy positions on the issues that really resonate in a primary. Well, you're a guy who, who knows politics and knows public policy. Will Rand Paul follow in the tradition of his dad who basically went to war with the Federal Reserve? And given your stance on monetary policy, is that a wise priority to have in terms of uh, making the dollar sound again? We've got about a minute and a half. Well, you know, J.D., Rand Paul is his own man. He, he became a U.S. senator through his own hard work. And while he shares our values when it comes to the Fed and monetary policy, he's not going to lead with that, I don't believe, like his father did, because he wants to create his own image. But I do believe that Rand Paul would be one of the best, if not the best, candidate for president when it comes to controlling the Fed and sound monetary policy. So that's my first bar for a candidate going into the elect this election, and that's who has the guts to take on the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and that's the Federal Reserve System in Washington, D.C. We'll keep an eye on it. Steve Lonigan, you may have finished second to Cory Booker in that New Jersey special Senate election, but you are second to none in terms of wanting to get back to basics, a strong dollar, and the embrace of conservative principles. Steve, we wish you a very Merry Christmas, and we look forward to talking to you in the days ahead. Take good care. Thank you for that, J.D. Good Merry Christmas. Yes, indeed. Merry Christmas. And do you say Merry Christmas to your neighbors? Do you say Merry Christmas to those who wait on you in stores and restaurants? 
Why does the big media have a bah humbug Scrooge approach to Christmas? We'll talk about it next with two important guests as America's Forum rolls on.